How many people have seen the movie uh, Back to the Future? Well, you probably ask your question, yourself a question. What happens if you go back in time and meet your teenage mother before you're born and she falls in love with you? What happens then? You're in deep doo-doo, okay? <laughs> I'm going to be talking about physics of the impossible. And the book, much to my surprise, hit the New York Times bestseller list for five weeks running. <clears throat> when was the last time you saw a book? <clears throat> When was the last time you saw a book on the New York Times bestseller list with the word physics on it? <laughs> Let us now talk about the impossible. First of all, the impossible has always been part of history in the 1800s. This is Lord Kelvin, the most famous physicist of the 1800s. And he was asked about airplanes, heavier than aircraft, heavier than air aircraft. And Lord Kelvin said, bah, humbug. Airplanes violate the laws of physics. Also, how old is the Earth, he was asked. And he said, the Earth cannot be any more than a few million years old. Otherwise, it would have cooled down. Impossible for it to be billions of years old, as Darwin and other biologists claimed. And then he said, x-rays, ha! X-rays were a hoax. Radio, no practical application for radio whatsoever. So why did they make so many mistakes in the 1800s? And then in the 20th century, Robert Goddard pioneered the work in rocketry, sending rockets that eventually took us to the moon. The New York Times railed against Robert Goddard, called him a fool, said he was wasting money with these rockets because, said the New York Times, rockets cannot move in outer space because there's no air in outer space, said the New York Times. Well, we now know that the only hot air is in the New York Times editorial room. <laughs> so I'd like to look at the laws of impossibility laid down by Arthur C. Clarke. He laid down three laws of the impossible. My favorite one is the third one. The third law of the impossible is any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So the difference between magic and physics is not that one breaks the laws of physics and the other one obeys the laws of physics. Magic is any sufficiently advanced technology. So I divide these into three types of technologies. First, we have class one, which are, which are possible in 100 years. In 100 years, invisibility will become a reality. Certain forms of teleportation at the atomic level, starships, Today, I'm even going to talk about telepathy, artificial intelligence, class one impossibilities. Class two, impossibilities stretch the boundaries of the known laws of physics. Time machines, for example. Stephen Hawking tried very hard to prove that time travel was impossible, and he gave up. In physics, we have the expression, if it's not forbidden, it is mandatory. And then we have class three impossibilities, which simply violate everything we know about the universe, like perpetual motion machines. The New York Times, well, Wall Street Journal, often calls me on the phone saying that, Professor, we have yet another perpetual motion machine that's making the rounds. Millions of dollars have been pledged by wealthy investors. Do you have something to say to the Wall Street Journal? And I quote from the immortal words of that great philosopher of the Western world, P.T. Barnum. It was P.T. Barnum who once said, quote, there's a sucker born every minute. 